And you can see there's the increment accumulator program. It's slower than before because this inner loop I've stuck some no operations so that it counts a bit slower and you can see the fastest flashing bit is actually visibly flashing. So this thing's still working. Next thing I want to do is play with this card, which is the asynchronous serial interface, the M8650. And its circuit is, and here's what's on it, this is a annotated schematic by S. Lafferty, he's put a lot of writing in there. This board, let's have a closer look, turn that off. Yeah, this board connects to the outside world via this 40 pin bird connector and it came, the computer came with a cable that plugs in there. However, this cable's only wired for 20 milliamp communication with a teleprinter. And I want to connect it to a laptop. Uh, let's have a look at the board first. Um, there's a bunch of jumpers in various areas. These ones select what address this thing resides at in, in memory, what IO address it has, and the standard addresses are 3 and 4 for the receive and transmit, or vice versa. I think it's 4 for transmit, 3 for receive. Uh, these links up here select the board rate, that one selects how many stop bits there are, and that one selects whether the transmitter and receive operate at the same frequency. And that frequency comes from this 14.418 megahertz crystal. Now all these jumpers are factory set, except for this one which has to be set by the user. But all these have still got their factory settings, so I'll leave all that. With possibly the exception of this one, uh, remove that to make it go to one stop bit, which is a bit normal. Teleprinters needed two stop bits, but computers don't, so I'll probably swap that one out. Now, as it sits with this crystal, it can only do 110 board. Did I say 110 before? I might have said 150, but it can only do 110 board. So even if you switch up the speed here, you'll get multiples of 110, none of which are standard speeds. So what you can do is change that crystal for a 19.661, so going from 14 in the bit to 19 in the bit, and that'll change the 110 board to 150 board. And then the other multiples will give you 300, 600, 1200, and 2400 which is a, a more usable speed, still pretty slow. And uh, there's a modification you can make this board here where you break one of the tracks coming from a timing counter and insert a three-way jumper, a three-way pin with a, a jumper that goes across two of them. So you can either have one times by reconnecting the link that you cut or bypassing this chip and running the rest of the circuit from what goes into that chip. In other words, it's going to run 16 times fast because this chip won't be dividing it by 16. And then the 2400 board goes up to 38400, which is pretty damn good. Might do that. The trace to be cut is this thick one here. So I might just, could just cut it on the back, stick the... Uh, jumper here rather than drilling holes in the board just glue on the jumper and yeah min minimal uh, interference of the board and if it can always be removed by just if it's just glued melt the glue off and uh, just put a link across the cut in the trace so this cable is no good as i mentioned and i want to use this cable to talk to the pc the usb at one end and rs232 at the other i think this works the connector here, I've just got an old IDE cable from an old PC and cut it up and done this. So out of those 40 pins, I only need three of them. They're the 40 pins on that connector. It uses the deck alphabet A through to Z, but they leave out G, I, O and P because they could be confused for an order or one. And 
of course being 40 pins you run out of letters so then they go to doubling up through to VV. If we assign A to pin 1 then we get these mappings from numbers to letters. I've seen it suggested that uh, perhaps the A should not be pin 1. So for instance there, that's pin 1 down there. If you plug it in there you get A which is down there. But modern headers like these have a little notch so that this key can go into them and that would put A down this end in pin VV. But uh, that's not one of those modern connectors so I don't really see the point of doing that. You've got to cut that key off anyway to get it in because there is no notch and since it faces that way the board sits in the computer like that, that's the front. So I want this to come to the back so that's a natural way for this to plug in like that. So, like that, and there's a ground, transmit and receive, and I'll solder this DB9 female onto there, so that this can fit into it, and things should work, but I won't put this on just yet, because I want to see if we're getting data out on here by just looking at it with an oscilloscope. And I've got a small program I found somewhere, this will just transmit continuously whatever character is set up on the lower eight bits of this switch register. So I'll put that in, put the board in, watch for sparks and connect an oscilloscope to this. All right now I've got the M8650 board in the computer with its connector and the three wires that I need. Connect it to the oscilloscope ground and transmit data out and we can see what happens on the oscilloscope. This is, I haven't put the program in to drive that thing yet. This is just a smoke test, so we'll turn it on and see if anything blows up. Okay, and... And the computer is still running the increment accumulator test, so that is not stopping the rest of the computer working. Okay, so now, I'll put in the short test program that sends whatever I put on the switch register down here out the serial port. All right, program's in there now. So load address, clear, and continue. And something's happening there. Trying to sink in the scope. Oh well, looks like we've got something happening there. Uh, it's AC, it's toggling between plus and minus. What, uh, I've got them on 10 times, so uh, 1 volt per division, about 12, plus and minus 12 volts. And that's with 0070 in the switch register. I'll switch that all to all zeros now. Uh -huh. Good. Looks, that looks like a start bit, some data. A couple of stop bits and then another start bit, so I'll switch out, swing out to a, yeah, alright, I'll put in just the low order bit, is that right, start bit, alright, I think I've got this worked out, I was con getting confused because I'm more used to looking at the TTL side of things rather than the RS232 side of things. Try and zoom in on all this. Alright, we can see the oscilloscope and the switch register. Now, I've got confused, this is inverted, so the start bit is actually this transition from here to here. That's, that would be a low in on the TTL side of things before it goes into the output driver. But once you're in the RS232 world, it's inverted plus and minus 12 volts. So that there is the start bit going low. I'm talking in terms of the TTL side rather than what we're actually looking at. So there's the low and we can see two stop bits at the end which are highs. And the cycle repeats after four divisions at 25 milliseconds. So that's 100, 100 milliseconds in four divisions 
which is a tenth of a second. So we're sending 10 characters per second. And each character consists of a start bit, eight data bits, and two stop bits. So that's 11 bits times 10, 110 board, as we expect. Okay, now, if I switch on the lowest order bit, there's our start bit, there's the one for the low order bit, and if I keep turning on more bits, that, this here gets wider, pretty scope having trouble sinking now. Start bit shifted out to, out to here. This is all our data bits, and that's all of them. So we've got start bit, then eight data bits, and two stop bits, which are all high, and then we get the start bit on the next character. If I turn off, say, the bottom four, we've got our start bit, four data bits, four of zero, four data bits of one and two stop bits. Uh, let's try turn off the top two. Bottom four. Yep. Start bit. Four data bits. Four day. Four data bits of zero. Two stop bits. Next start bit. I'm not sure there's anything I can do to make that any more clear. Seven data bits. So. Got a sync problem again. Looks like start bit there. Seven data bits of one. One data bit of zero. That's this last one. And two stop bits before the, the next start bit. Beautiful. So now what I can do is connect this instead of the oscilloscope. Plug it into this serial cable and uh, try and read it on the laptop. Back shortly. So there's the connector added to the end of the wires and this serial to USB cable going to a laptop here. I've got a couple of uh, terminal programs, both of which I find annoying, but anyway. 110.82 COM2, that looks good. Open. Sounds like it's not happy. Let me investigate. Right, that was using putty. Now I've tried TerraTerm, which does look like it's opened with those parameters. So turn this on. And at 7.0, I think I've still got my little program for sending the switch register value out. Mode address, clear, continue. I'm not doing much. It's running, but nothing coming up there. Right, that switch, the accumulator wouldn't be showing the switch register unless that program was running. Nothing there. Why the bloody hell not? I've got my transmit and receive wires crossed. This is why I hate serial. There's so many things got to have right before anything works. Set up. Serial. Com two one ten two one. That's all good stuff. Open. Oh, no address. Clear. Continue. Ah, idiot. That's my <laughs> no address. Clear. Continue. And there's that program running, but nothing coming out there. I shall investigate. Right, I'll reverse my two wires up on that serial connection because I always get that wrong. Let's see if that was what the problem was. Start address 70. Load address clear. Continue. Uh huh. It was. Look at that. So I'm repeating 
the rest of this video because the screen I had on the Teratome was uh, way too small and the font was too small and it was unreadable. So continuing with that t same test that reads the switch register and outputs it to the async port. So 70 is where it's at. Right address, clear, continue. And nice big fat font. And if you look at the accumulator we can see there's what's being read from the switch register and there's how it's been interpreted now. And if we change from octal to hexadecimal we've got three eight. So three F should be a question mark and four one should be an A or zero on that sign. A B C D E F G etc. So that's looking pretty good. <coughs> now, if I change the first instruction of this, which is to clear the accumulator and or in the switch register, if I change that instead to increment accumulator, then we should get a whole sequence of different codes coming out. So, stop that. Go back to 7.0. Look at the memory data. Examine. We've got uh, 6.0.4.1. Alright, load address, examine, sorry, 7604, that's better, and if we change that to load address again, 7001, deposit that, then switch back to style address, load, clear, continue, Accumulator. Nothing happening. No, hold, idiot. Clear, continue. And it spat out a bell character, I think, since that beep was. And you can see the codes here and the characters there. So it's just wrapping around through all 256 possible codes. A lot of them are gibberish. And now that was the 08. And we'll get to printables about now. There we go. Okay, so the asynchronous transmit is working. The next thing to do is try the other program I've got, which echoes what we type in on the keyboard. It goes into the PDP-8 and it transmits it back to the terminal. Let's do that. Oh. Okay, that program is at 4.0, so load address. Make sure holds not on. Clear. Continue. And now I should be able to type in Hey! L O Space World. Hello world. <coughs> character turn. And how do I do a line feed? Control Control M is a character turn. Control L. Is that right? Anyway, yeah, it works. Control L is a line feed. <coughs> Caps lock. Hello world. There. Hello world. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? So, this machine is looking good so far. Not sure what to do next. Maybe I'll upgrade the speed in that async board so we're not stuck at 110 board because that's pretty miserable. The option of going to uh, 38400 is quite attractive. Uh, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more of this stuff, I'm not sure when I get around to it, but. Uh, Please subscribe and please give this a like and I'll catch you later.